The Lord be with you. Uh, welcome today. Today is the reign of Christ, um, what we used to call Christ the King. It's the last Sunday of the church year. That means Advent is next week and we uh, begin a, a whole new uh, cycle of the Christian calendar. Um, I want to say a special thanks to Helen. Is she here? I don't see her. There you are. Helen, it's so good to have you. Welcome. And uh, if you don't stay for coffee, we'll all be miffed. So. <laughs> um, after worship today, we have our budget meeting, and this is to set the budget for 2025, so please, if you can stay for that, it's really important. We need a quorum, but more importantly, we just need all of our voices together so that we can make a decision and uh, uh, appropriately for our community. Um, two events that I would like to draw your attention to, and maybe it's not specifically for you, the first one, but maybe there's somebody in your family um, your siblings, your larger uh, network of acquaintances. On December 5, um, we are hosting a group for children of aging parents. If that's a phase of life you're in right now or that you know someone who would benefit from a, um, a gathered community to talk about some of the issues involved, um, that's on December 5 at 8 o'clock here at Redeemer and um, it's also in the newsletter uh, so you'll have that on your computer and uh, also on December 7th we have the um, uh, annual um, hymn sing hymn festival carol sing thank you um, for Christmas that's a potluck at six o'clock hymns at seven so that's December 7th um, if that's something also you want to uh, invite others to please do that are there any other announcements this morning? All right, well, may I invite David to come forward and offer our land acknowledgement, please. We are living and working on the historical territory of the Huron Wendat, Patoon, Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the New Credit Indigenous Peoples. This territory is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and agreement between the Haudenosaunee and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the lands and resources around the Great Lakes. Can I invite you to turn to page 94 in your hymnal and uh, we'll join together in confession and forgiveness. Please rise, page 94. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sins and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead to sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn is 431, What Can It Mean For Us? 431.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please, let's turn to our Kyrie on page 165. Let us pray. 
Gracious and ever-loving God, you chose Christ's reign of justice and peace as a sign to the nations. Grant that all the people of earth, now divided from each other, may be united by the gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. Jeremy, can I invite you forward? A reading from Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. If I can invite you to turn to Psalm 93. Let's sing it together. Psalm 93. Please rise. Our gospel acclamation is on page 171. According to St. John, the 18th chapter. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this of your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not one of your people, am I? 
Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth hears my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The Bible, of course, begins and ends with creation. So from the beginning words, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis 1 to the final depiction of our world transformed into a new heaven and a new earth, Revelations 21. Now these are proper start and end points within which to sandwich human history, or they have been for a long while. I got a text this week from a woman I've known my whole life. I actually knew her older sister, uh, Karen, Karen and I met when we were kids and had uh, become best friends. This was way back in elementary school. Karen died at 16 from an asthma attack. Now, the reason her sister had reached out after all these years is because I had made a slightly disparaging comment about myself on Facebook. I wrote, I turned 60 this year and I'm just really wrestling with it. I'm not quite sure what to think about it. And so Karen's sister wrote, with kindness and a little bit of humor, it's a blessing to be on the green side of the grass. <laughs> a little bit of perspective there. A painting I made shows a young woman embraced by the earth in death. Um, now I have to say, I'm not an oil painter. I am a trained and I've exhibited as a printmaker my whole life. This is a very early piece. Um, I created it for a friend of mine whose younger sister had also died. Um, so Lisa is in this painting, but there's an awful lot of Karen in this painting too. I wanted to evoke a sense of comfort and serenity in the grave because the earth embraces us. Now, this earth, our planet home, doesn't just welcome us at birth, it doesn't just give us every amusement and entertainment throughout our life, but it tends to us when we return home, when the end comes. Our return to the great unknown, to the source. Thank you, Bridget. We live we struggle, we die, and it all happens in this, which is really the most astonishing of all possible worlds, right? The earth, in a very real sense, is our mother, and we are born from this mother. So when we talk about the coming of Christ's reign, we're talking about justice, peace, hope, and humankind gathering together as children of one family, of one mother. We're earthlings. So the earth is our origin. It's our nourishment. It's our support and guide. I think that our sense of morality itself comes from the earth. Don't steal. Don't hoard. Don't kill. These are physical realities. Human beings and the earth that we inhabit, we are completely implicated in each other's lives. Now the first shaping of the universe into those great systems of energy that constitute stars and galaxies, in these celestial furnaces all elements are shaped and eventually, some 10 billion years later, the solar system 
and the earth and all of its complex living forms come into being. Here on earth, both plant and animal life was born in the primordial sea some three billion years ago. Plants came upon earth about 600 million years ago, and the planet earth had shaped itself through a great series of transformations forming the continents, the mountains, the rivers, the valleys, the streams. The atmosphere was long in developing. The animals, after the development of the atmosphere, came on board a brief interval later. Now, as these life forms established themselves over a hundred million years, the luxuriant foliage formed layer upon layer of organic matter, which then was buried in the crust of the earth to become fossilized and to become these enormous wells of stored energy, which are so important to life on earth in our age. 100 million years ago, 100 million years ago, flowers appeared and then the earth began to form a new kind of beauty. Some 60 million years ago, the birds began to take to the air. Mammals walked in the forest, and some of the mammals, the whales, porpoises, and dolphins, they went back into the sea. They said, enough of this. <laughs> so finally, some two million years ago, the ascending forms of life culminated in human consciousness. Wandering food gatherers, hunters, until some 8,000 years ago, only then began settling into village life. This life led us through what's called the Neolithic period to the classical civilization, which has flourished so brilliantly for the last 5,000 years. The story of awakening consciousness, and I don't believe that it's just confined to human beings, the story of awakening consciousness is in some ways the most dramatic part of the whole story. And then, 400 years ago, a new stage of scientific development took place, which in the 18th and 19th century brought about human technological dominance of the earth out of which we had emerged. The imbalance that we feel on earth today tells us, I think, something about our spirits and the spiritual growth in the last only 400 years. It tells us we need to, uh, or we need a spirituality that grows out of a reality deeper than our perceived or understood reality. We need a spirituality that is maybe as deep as the processes that created matter and light. A spirituality born out of the solar system and even out of the heavens beyond the solar system. There in the stars is where the primordial elements take shape in both their physical but their also their psychic aspects. Out of these elements, the solar system and the earth took its shape. Out of the earth, we took our shape. I think there's a certain triviality to any spiritual discipline that is not supported by the physical dynamics of the universe as we can best understand it. A spirituality is a mode of being in which not only the divine and the human continue with each other, but in which we discover ourselves as beings in the universe and the universe discovers itself within us. It's a parent-child relationship, a mother-child relationship, or it has been until recently. Until recently, the child was taken care of by the mother. Now, however, the mother must be extensively cared for by the child. The child has grown into an adult. And the mother-child relationship needs to undergo a renewal 
similar to that in the ordinary process of human maturing. In this process, both child and mother experience a period of alienation. Then follows a reconciliation period when mother and child relate to each other with a new type of intimacy, a new depth of appreciation, a new mode of interdependence. Such is the historical period in which we are now living. Development of this new mode of earth-human communion can only take place within the context of a profound spiritual renewal. Thus, we need a spirituality that will encompass the entire process of the physical development of the cosmos as we understand it. Friends, we are no longer simply on the journey of the Judeo-Christian community from the Garden of Eden to the New Jerusalem. Rather, we're on a journey of primordial matter through the marvelous sequences of transformation in the stars, in the earth, in living beings, in human consciousness, toward an ever more complex spiritual, physical intercommunion of the parts with each other. And with that numinous presence that has been manifested through the entire cosmos from the beginning. The Bible begins and ends with creation and a new creation. And I think those words still hold as a guiding story. But we as human beings, also understand life differently today than at the time when they wrote the Bible 2,000 years ago. Come with me to the f beginning of the sermon. I got a Facebook comment from the sister of a friend of mine who died 44 years ago, then a 16-year-old child. I painted a picture of her. It was for someone else, but it was deeply influenced by her and our relationship. I was a pallbearer at her funeral. Karen's mom came up to me after the service and held out her hand. It was just so formal. She told me Karen loved me. I was crying. I'd been to Karen's house a million times. Her mom cooked. She had a wicked Irish sense of humor. I loved her. She loved me. I was as bereft with her handshake as I was with Karen's death. Forward now 44 years in the future, a father of two grown children, one grandchild. I realize now, upon reflection, that Karen's mom was not just burying a child, as impossible as that is. She was doing what she had to do to hold the cosmos at bay. The entire universe was threatening to annihilate her. Of course, I didn't have the wherewithal to understand any of that then. What I know now, after burying my parents, after helping four people into ambulances, suicides, after burying a seven-year-old boy hit by a dump truck, after losing a friend to drugs, after, after, after. What I know now is that scripture is really the middle verses to our story. We use scientific language today, and maybe the story seems quite clinical at times, but it's a story that goes backwards forever in time and seemingly forward into ever. But it's the same story. It's just a larger explanation of it. We are talking about our in 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 infinitesimally small selves in a cosmos that's 46 billion light years wide. A universe whose outer reaches we will never see regardless of the power of our telescopes because things are expanding beyond the reaches of light. What we're talking about is transforming our understanding of God who is bigger than we knew. Perhaps a little bit more frightening? Certainly and significantly more complex. But in this I take refuge. I still take refuge in our island home, this earth. 
I take refuge more specifically in one small child in a small earthen grave. Why do I take refuge here? Because it's not the farthest star or even Jerusalem for that matter where we come into contact with the cosmos, but it's the grave. And that grave where we bury our mother, our father, our friend, our child, causes not just us, but the heart of the universe to weep. We experience it as intuition. Because we die in part, and then we find a way to go on. It feels impossible at first. The world of before is forever altered. We ourselves can never be the same, but we go on. Going forward into the unknown, trusting the universe with our lives, giving thanks because despite everything we know, we are still connected to a source of life that's bigger than we thought possible, bigger than we can imagine. We are unimaginably small, but what gives us significance is our connection to a source that is infinite. That spirit that created all things is in us too. Amen. Will you join me? Our hymn is in the Second book, the um, All Creation Sings, number 901, Now the Heavens Start to Whisper.
rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation, saying, merciful God, and responding, hear our prayer. Revive our congregations, synods, and national church body to reflect the love, justice, and kinship of your kingdom. Bless Pastor Michael, Bishops Carla, and Bishop Susan, who teach and serve your people. Bless, too, your servant Etienne, that he may fulfill your purpose for him. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Help us to deepen our spiritual journey with the earth. Help us to be mindful of creation around us. Give us courage and the ability to bring relief where we are able. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Grant wisdom to the leaders who govern, legislate, and deliberate on our behalf. May we in our politics, as well as our prayers, advance your nonviolent reign of justice seeking. Love through our work. Merciful God, hear our prayer. prayer. Draw near to those who are detained on trial or incarcerated. Transform systems of retribution into systems of reconciliation and restoration. Empower activists who advocate for change. Merciful God, yeah. Also, we call to mind the saints, those who have served this congregation and those who serve the world. Especially, we ask your blessing on Bryce, Chandra, Eli, and Elsie, who mourn the death of Bryce's sister Lydia. Join our voices with theirs in praise to the one who loves us and sets us free. Merciful God, Hear our we offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Thank you. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace together. Come up the stair and walk around, it's a little easier. <laughs>
Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O God of life, through Jesus, whose reign of peace never ceases. He tends to the wounds of body and spirit with the oil of consolation and the wine of hope. He is the one who raises to life in his healing presence all who come to him. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, with the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Our holy, holy, holy is on page 173. heaven you alone are holy you alone are God the universe declares your praise beyond the stars beneath the sea within each cell with every breath generations bless your faithfulness through the water by night and day across the wilderness out of exile into the future we give you thanks for Jesus Christ who lives at the heart of human life near to those who suffer beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night in which he met with death, our Lord Jesus gathered with those he loved. He took bread, he gave thanks, and he gave it for them to eat, saying, take this, this is my body given for you. As often as you share this with one another, remember me. So too, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people. As often as you share this with one another, remember me. And now as often as we break this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal, among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, loving God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit, in your church, without end. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Come for now, all things 
things are made ready, the gifts of God for the people of God.
Please rise. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is 893, Before You, Lord, We Bow. Thank you. 